finally today with the window for top dressing wheat here, a heads up for producers using enriched strips. There may be some challenges this year because of the frigid temperatures we've seen recently. Here's SunUp's Austin Moore to explain. The enriched strip is a simple, elegant tool for identifying a nitrogen opportunity in wheat. Combined with Green Seeker technology, this strip offers producers a specific nitrogen recommendation for their field. But recent cold temperatures mean the current readings may be misleading. We predict grain yield by looking at the biomass. How much green do we have out there? We're actually predicting biomass and taking from biomass to grain yield. Which means leaf tips burned by sub-freezing temperatures indicate to the technology less green than is actually there. There's two aspects of it. You, you want to hide the green. If the, the freeze damage is above on the top of the, the plant, so you hide the green below it. But another part, that yellow lowers the number. So bare soil, dead tissue, residue is about a 0.2 to 0.3 on the sensor. A full green, beautiful pasture of wheat or field of wheat will be about a 0.9 to 0.95. So you add dead tissue to that and it lowers the value that we see. It can't see enough green, so it sees it as background. The more non-green background we have, the lower the value and the lower the yield prediction. Fortunately, there are ways to overcome this depending on how much damage you have. If we have a slight freeze damage event like the field we're standing in right now with just a little bit of leaf tip, we don't mess with the yield prediction value necessarily, but we do need that wheat to recover. We need that dead tissue to slough off, allow a week or two of regrowth, get some good growing conditions, and then that's when we need to go out and sense. More intense freeze events require a different approach. There, there's one fix that we have when we have an extreme freeze damage event. When we've lost a significant amount of tissue, uh, and there's just the field is nothing but yellow. And, and we do this very similarly to how we've handled dual purpose wheat. Uh, the fix actually came from producers. They found this to work. So we'll go into that, that sensor based nitrogen rate calculator where we put in planting date. We're going to move the planting date between 7 to 14 days after our original date. So let's say the original planting date was September 1st. We have significant freeze damage. I'm going to want to move that date to September 8th or September 15th, depending on where we need to increase that. The larger the wheat or the more the damage, the more days we need to compensate for. When you're gauging that, you, you have to go back to sound agronomic practices. Look at the environmental conditions you've had, the stand that you're currently looking at, the, the yield region of the area. You know, I'm looking at a wheat crop. I have a fairly decent idea that it should fall within a 45, 50 bushel range on a given field. If the sensor's predicting 38 bushel, and I know agronomically it should be at 45, I want to adjust that growing, that, that planting date to get to that level that, that fits. This works because while the progress of the crop is important, the real key is the difference between the enriched strip and the rest of the field. As we raise that enriched strip value from let's say 35 bushel to 45 bushel, the farmer's practice value is raising from 25 bushel to 35 bushel. Okay. So the difference does not just grow and grow, it still saves that responsiveness. Of course, Arnal reminds us not to fuss with the numbers just to get results we like. I'm not recommending to it any case where if you just don't like the yield recommendation to change a planting date because that's not right. We have very good accuracy in yield prediction until we have biomass loss, large biomass loss, which occurs in dual purpose wheat and major freeze events. First hollow stem is still a ways off, so for most Oklahoma producers there is time to let the wheat recover before sensing. For SUNUP, I'm Austin Moore.